okay so uh, this is how it will this is how the azo compound will be formed through this mechanism so instead of this OH we can have other groups as well and that other group should be such that it is also electron donating such that sufficient negative charge polarity develops at this carbon in order to react with or give its electron to this diazo fine so in, let's see a few more examples where this coupling would be possible Now we have a di diazonium salt and if we take NN dimethyl aniline then this nitrogen again has a lone pair and it will be pumping that lone pair into the phenyl ring developing negative charge at ortho and para position because of uh, steric hindrance at ortho position Preferably reaction will take place from para position and when this carbon attacks this nitrogen again a diazo compound is developed which will look like this. So you don't have to do much in this coupling reaction you just have to identify what the final azo compound is going to look like. So this is what the final azo compound is going to look like. All right. Now this is NN dimethyl para phenyl azo aniline. You will name it as NN dimethyl para because at para position you have phenyl aniline. This happens to be yellow in color. Now one thing that we have to know that these azo compounds are uh, colorful in nature they can be yellow orange red blue green but generally they are colorful the reason for the color is because there is a long conjugation in this as you can see there's a three pi conjugation of three pi bonds in this ring that is in conjugation with this double bond between nitrogen and that is in conjugation with three pi bonds again so there are seven pi bonds in conjugation and there's a lone pair there as well so there's a lot of electronic density in conjugation and there's a long path for electron to flow from one position to another and that's the reason for the colorful nature of these azo compounds if you know potassium permanganate is purple in color and the reason there for purple nature purple nature of that compound is electron from oxygen transits from its orbital to the orbital of manganese the d orbital and it goes back and forth back and forth back and forth when it goes to the higher energy level and when it comes down it releases some wave h mu of some some wavelength corresponding to that wavelength the color comes out of that compound similarly when the electron is transiting from one orbital to another during that jump it releases some waves and that wave corresponding to a wavelength is of particular color. So depending upon the compound, there will be some waves emit, emitted out of that compound depending upon the extent of conjugation. And that will decide the color of the compound. So this conjugation here is the basic reason for their colorful nature. So diazo compounds are colorful because of long conjugation in those compounds. Fine. Just to cite an example,
Now this, as you can see, is a diazo compound, and this diazo compound is what you perhaps must be knowing, methyl orange. Now this methyl orange is a indicator, and this term, or you, you, you must have been introduced to this indicator when you were taught titration in your class 11th, as early uh, when you start learning chemistry uh, after class 10th. So you have used this in titration and methyl orange has a property that it is red in acidic medium and it's uh, yellow, yellow I suppose. Yellow in basic medium. So when the system turns from acidic to basic, the color of this methyl orange changes and the color basically is because of conjugation. So uh, this is a kind of this this is a kind of azo compound that you should know. Fine. So this is the whole idea of a diazo coupling. There's not much to talk about this, but you should you should know how diazo compounds are formed and in what condition they will be formed. The condition number one is apart from diazo diazonium salt, there must be a compound present in the system in which a group G on the benzene ring is electron releasing such that at para position you have sufficient negative charge polarity to react with that diazonium salt. And this G can be OH, this can be NH2, this can be substituted amines, a substituted amine group. Fine. So uh, that's it. Now uh, theoretically uh, let's discuss few theoretical problems. Now Generally, the system during diazo coupling is weakly basic. The reason is, suppose you have phenol. Now, when you have a weakly basic system, there will be some hydroxide ion present. And that will turn this phenol into phenoxide. And if you have phenoxide, then the extent of resonance is higher than that of phenol because phenol is neutral. And in phenoxide, the negative charge on oxygen has to be stabilized. So that negative charge will do more enthusiastically resonance with phenyl ring than a neutral OH group will do. So that will increase the charge polarity at para position more than will be in a neutral phenol. So that's the reason and if there's more charge polarity then the extent of reaction with the diazonium salt will be high. That's the reason during diazonium coupling, during diazo coupling, we take the system to be weakly basic. Now, they may ask you, what will happen if we make the system strongly basic? Now, if you make the system strongly basic, then there will be many hydroxide ions present in the system. And when you have many hydroxide ions present, then when, as we have talked before, when the concentration of this hydroxide ion increases, then they start to act as a nucleophile instead of a base. So this nucleophile can now and react with this diazonium instead of your phenyl ring, which you thought will react. So your phenyl ring will be kept aside and your hydroxide ion will start to react instead of phenyl ring. So you'll not have any coupling, you'll have something else. So if this OH- minus comes and react with this nitrogen, you'll have this. And further, there are more base present here. So the hydrogen on this oxygen will also be abstracted. So you'll have a salt like this. So forget about coupling bubbling. There will be no coupling if you have many hydroxide ion present in the system. So to avoid this unwanted reaction, the concentration of hydroxide ion should not increase. So the pH should be around 8. It should not be more than 8. Fine. 